and a very good afternoon to you. I'm Lisa Lloyd with the CBC News Break. A motorcyclist escaped a serious injury early this morning when his bike and a car collided just outside the entrance to the Coast Guard base along the Spring Garden Highway. Police say 59-year-old Galbert Maynard of Turner's Hall, St. Andrew, complained of abrasions to his face after the accident and was taken to hospital. The car, which was moderately damaged, was driven by 26-year-old Khadija Miller of Best Terrace in St. James. Local trade unionists are uniting in their opinion that Barbadian employers continue to disregard the rights of workers. These were representatives from the Barbados Workers Union and the Unity Workers Union who attended a panel discussion on industrial relations at the UWI Cave Hill campus. UWU General Secretary Caswell Franklin says although all seems well with employment legislation, penalties for wrongful dismissal should be reviewed and enforced as well as other laws. For example, the Employment Rights Act, you are supposed to give the workers a statement of employment particulars, right? Setting out what their contract will be and all that kind of stuff. Now, what is the penalty if you refuse to do that? I, I've been checking the last I mean, this morning when my bad looking didn't it? Yeah. So you can ignore it. Eventually, if the worker um, goes to the tribunal and the tribunal takes three, four years to deal with the man because it's home that the um, average now. They will issue you, uh, they will make a, um, a statement for you, you know, trust me, it doesn't work. And General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Tony Moore, maintains that workers of the Sanitation Service Authority were blatantly disrespected when government hired private waste haulers. The union's problem is that there was not discussion. So you go and jump. And you put on a plaster on the cut, you don't clean the top, you don't know what's going on close to the bone or anything. You pay a little attention to the fact that for years and years and years the problem had been highlighted and suggestions have been proposed and you go now because it is in your favor, the public is sufficiently annoyed that flies plus the lack of water is causing them distress so you go and jump to a solution that will shift people's focus away from the underlying issue. Barbados and other islands in the Caribbean have been praised for their approach to early childhood development. And now it's time to share that extensive knowledge with the rest of the world. This assessment from Dr. Betsy Bertrand, PAHO's Regional Advisor on Child Health. She was speaking at the opening of an early childhood development training program put on by UNICEF. Early childhood development is a key issue for us, for every country in our region, and especially for the Caribbean, because you in the Caribbean were the, the first countries having early childhood development programs, and you actually in the Caribbean is where a lot of the knowledge is coming to, to, uh, to, to be shared with the rest of the world. So it was, um, it's very important, uh, this issue. Meantime, Senior Medical Officer Dr. Karen Broom says Barbados is committed to ensuring that the healthy and holistic development of children remains a priority. Many factors influence how children reach their full potential. And these include their family's income status, geographic location, ethnicity, disability, religion, or sexual orientation. Many children do not receive adequate nutrition, care, and opportunities to learn. Children that experience good nutrition and health and consistent loving care and encouragement to learn in the early years of life do better at school, are healthier, have higher earnings, and participate more in society. A local insurance broker has pledged to continue building on the strong foundation left by the island's forefathers. It is CGM Gallagher Insurance Brokers, the latest company to come on board with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation's Guardians of the Heritage Initiative. Neil Shepard, claims supervisor at CGM Gallagher, says the values that have sustained Barbados as a nation has helped the company to build a culture of integrity, community and excellence. And it continues to continue this process. We too at CGM Gallagher are proud to note our positive influence internationally. CGM Gallagher, as a major player in the insurance market locally and internationally, is among a group of companies listed among the world's best 
ethical companies for 2016. And this is the accolade that we have accomplished for the last five years. Barbados has been built on a strong community spirit. And as a corporate citizen, we encourage and foster this trait through the adoption of the Irvin Wilson School. Additionally, we continuously contribute to various children charities as we buy into the concept of taking a village to raise a child. And producer presenter Anthony Admiral Nelson thanked the insurance brokers for coming on board, noting that the two have similar philosophies. It's great to have CGM Gallagher as a part of this wonderful parade of companies and parade of flags. The interesting thing here is that we've been in this business for quite a while. We've been CGM Gallagher over 40 years, protecting the Caribbean. They are, of course, insurance brokers, and you can see them all around the region. And, of course, the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, you know the story. We cover the entire region with our broadcast. So I think this is a wonderful combination of companies. We certainly wish you all a happy independence, happy 50th, and we hope that we can continue this relationship for the next 50 years. Some of the island's indigenous cultural dances could be taught to foreign students at tertiary institutions. The suggestion from Program Manager of Education and Employment in the EU delegation in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Dr. Stephen Boyce. He says that this would help to expose more persons to local culture. Indigenous professional arts can be integrated into a unique learning experience for foreign students and visitors. So for example, a four week, four credit summer package could include learning sessions at the Barbados Language Center, where the students learn English as a foreign language, and afternoon sessions with practical performing art sessions to better perfect that English. Similarly, the Barbados Hospitality Institute could offer modules of authentic uh, Barbadian cuisine as well as the lectures. Dr. Boyce also believes that episodes of Barbadian shows should be more accessible. Lafitar from Beijing, bus stop and the like, serve a similar function in Barbados. Now, I can invariably go and download any episode from the last 42 years of Saturday Night Live. I don't think I can do the same for Barbadian satire. So I strongly believe that many of these scripts and these performances should be available, and they should be part of required reading at, at secondary school and the university, not just at K4, but right across the diaspora. Well, a lot of work still has to be undertaken before the full gains can be reaped from the exportation of indigenous cultural industries. This assessment from Chief Executive Officer of the Pinelands Creative Workshop, Rodney Grant. He was speaking at the Pinelands Creative Workshop's project closeout session of the internationalization of the community cultural performance arts, products and services as a component of a vibrant national cultural industry. He says research from the project highlighted several deficiencies in the sector and the need for standards in areas such as pay scales. Many times your towns would ask for some very ridiculous um, performances um, for very ridiculous fees, you know, they want you to perform. I remember recently someone called us and wanted us to do what it was, Shelly, three hours or something for a hundred dollars or some foolishness like that. So people would think to call you for some very ridiculous things and the bad thing about it is that sometimes you would say no and then our organization would say yes. Mr. Grant says the research revealed the need for more training and hence the project has resulted in a training manual being created. Training manual has also been developed to facilitate the development of standards, proficiency, capacity, and a strategy to consider in any attempt to prepare, negotiate, and facilitate entry into foreign markets. We encourage you to utilize the wealth of information derived from this project to your benefit and to that of the sector. We'll stay with us. We'll have regional and international news right after the break. I am Beverly Allen, Senior Business Development Officer with the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation, BIDC, and a guest judge on the Bank on Me Show. Don't forget to vote for your favorite contestant in the People's Choice Award on the Bank on Me website. This season on CBC TV.